Uh, hi guys, uh, my name is uh, Victor Stone, uh, as introduced. Um, I come from, uh, I was born in Japan, okay, and I grew up in the United States. I did not uh, expect uh, to join the military to go to war to Iraq, Afghanistan. It's just the way it turned out. Um, and uh, afterwards, I had a lot of options in life, uh, of which, um, you know, I thought this was one of the most exciting things that I can find. Um, I think, uh, you know, two ways to make uh, driving safer, okay. I think uh, we had a lot of discussions thus far, okay, about, you know, um, IoT and how everything is connected, you know, and it's kind of like this. IoT is about, you know, machines and machines communicating with each other, and then eventually we get to the point where everything is talking to each other, and then the human is the last to know what's going on, <laughs> right? <laughs> At some point, we need to get looped into the process, right? Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of times, hey, maybe um, some communication can touch a smartphone app and give us a banner headline, hey, you have this going on, and, you know, that's all nice and everything. Um, but uh, I think there's, you know, a lot of trends going on, uh, especially in the auto industry, okay, uh, that uh, we think is quite interesting. Let me introduce really quickly uh, who is Ignite. Okay, Ignite is a company uh, that was started by my father, 34 years in Sony. He's one of the foremost display engineers um, that uh, Japan had. Uh, and after he was done with Sony, he started up this company in Silicon Valley. Uh, and he was really focused in on uh, what's called projection technology. Okay, it's a really niche kind of a thing. You're in a, you know, in a movie theater, right? And you got like a projector, you know, in, in an image. You know, you're in a conference room. And that's, that's pretty much what projection technology is. And I think a lot of the, the former speakers today was talking how we had a really big rise in, in mobile, in tablets, you know, LCD, touch screens, right? That was what was sexy right, for the past 20 years, okay? So you have the entire world going into to LCD and tablets, and you have this, like, really small company working on, like, really niche kind of things, you know? And the niche thing was projection technology. Well, no one was doing projection anymore, okay? It's a pretty complicated technology. You have lens, and you have, have the, like, like, laser lights, and you gotta have this chip in the middle, you know? And that's really complicated. It wasn't growing, and it wasn't very sexy. Uh, and uh, no one was doing it except we did. Well. Fast forward 10 years, and you know, since no one did it, we, we pretty much became like champions of this industry. Uh, now we're in Silicon Valley, we're in Japan, we're in China, Taiwan, no matter where we go, uh, we're one of the foremost players who, you know, okay, look, when it's the projector people, we're actually quite well known in that very, very niche sector. It just so happens that projection technology had a huge resurgence about five years ago, uh, especially from auto and especially from telecom. And so we had all these like requests, you know, to work, collaborate, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we had to, to focus, okay? And we chose, okay, look, for telecom, uh, we have a client who's the biggest telecom, you know, carrier in Japan. Uh, and then for the, um, the auto, uh, there's a big um, tier one uh, that is a, a big investor into us. Uh, and we just kind of focused, you know, what we're doing, okay? And for the past 10, uh, five years, we've been developing a lot of ways that in projection technology is going to be useful in the auto industry. And I just want to show two examples of what we have coming out in the pipeline with you guys today. Um, first, uh, I want to start off with um, the, one of the, the topics that auto gave us, okay? And it's called night driving, okay? Glare. Okay, I'm standing up here and I see these, like, big LED lights. And let me tell you, it's pretty, pretty bright. But when you drive at night, that's exactly what happens, okay? Um, here's a fact, right? 51% of fatalities occur at night. 290,000 crashes right through snow and rain at night. 300 billion economic loss of social harm. This is all just in the United States. Yes, okay, so when we talk about the rest of the world, it's even worse. I was having dinner with Arjun yesterday, and he was telling me how tough it is, right, to drive in India, you know, because everyone is driving with high beams all the time, right? You're driving, right? And you're like, you know, of course you want, you want high beam because you can see what's going on. You know, like pedestrians, right? You know, you might have like cows, you know, and like, you know, you can crash into things. So you want the high beam, okay? But that oncoming car is also using high beam. And that high beam is in your face and it's causing glare. Your high beam is causing glare in that opposing car and you can get a lot of confusion and a lot of, you know, uh, uh, accidents can potentially happen. So what did Auto want? Auto wanted some sort of a way where you can have your cake and eat it too, right? You want high beam, but you don't want to cause glare. And how can you do that, right? Okay, so once again, this is the glare, right? It gets pretty distracting. Uh, you know, some countries, you know, like uh, it's less of a problem, right? In India, it's a huge problem. Um, in the United States, you know, in the metropolitan cities, not, a, not as big of a deal. You just go, majority of America lives in the suburbs. Suburbs in the United States, it's horrible, right? You de folks, folks definitely can vibe with this. And once again, pedestrians and whatnot, okay? It is a dangerous kind of a thing. It depends on what country you're at, what the biggest problem is. In the United States, it's deer, 
Okay, in other countries, it's pedestrians. Okay, um, and so yeah, it's it's a big problem. The problem is in the headlights. If we can create a headlight that allows you to have high beam without causing glare, okay, you have a billion dollar solution. Okay, and if you look in the the markets like um, the auto trade shows, whatnot, okay, we're starting to see some technologies, okay. Uh, like in the Mercedes Benzes and the Audis of the world, where you know you're having the, the, the test runs, um, it's pretty expensive technology at this point. Uh, and, and auto basically say, look, we have it as a proof of concept. Okay, the market loves it. Everyone wants it. Okay, and we need the technology that can take it from Mercedes Benz into Tata Nano. That's where we need to be at. And the search goes out. Who can do this? Okay. Uh, well, the United States, right? United States, you know, we've produced, you know, um, um, Steve Jobs, you know, and Bill Gates, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, lots of geniuses in the United States, right? Okay, so CMU, that's Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, okay? One of the foremost places where we do a lot of, like, you know, AI and robotics, right? Lots of people with 40-pound brains, okay? And they get together, right? <laughs> and this is in, in 2014, okay? 9-11, as a military guy, 9-11 is very meaningful to me, right? Uh, but uh, 2014, they announced a very interesting technology, okay? And what they're doing here is they, they say, like, look, here's how we can do it. Here's the headlight, okay? The headlight wants high beam, okay? And we're going to put a camera inside the headlight, okay? So as we do high beam, if there's an opposing car coming, you know, you can see the two lights, right? And whenever the camera s senses that, just to that area, we're going to block the light. Everyone else gets high beam, but just to that opposing car, we're going to block it. Then you can have your cake and eat it too. All right. And so, you know, it was hard for them to put it, you know, into the, the, the headlamp itself. So they mounted it on a big apparatus like this, you know, and they drove it around, you know, just to test it, you know, and it worked out great. Okay. Technology is awesome. All the auto all players love it. Okay. And they want to take this to market. Let's put it, you know, into our OEMs. All right. Uh, but there was a problem. Okay. When they tried to mount the whole thing into a headlight, okay, they ran into the problem. Camera works great, lens works great, but this thing called the spatial light modulator, this is the part that kind of blocks the light, you know, uh, to the oncoming car, it melted. I know, I mean, in a head headlights, you have to have a, uh, lots of light, right? And it gets pretty hot really easily, okay? Uh, and so, you know, all the best technologies in the world, they couldn't get it done. The top runner, for this uh, type of technology is a company called Texas Instruments, okay? They are an awesome, you know, probably one of the most um, well-respected um, uh, semiconductor companies, especially in the realm of, of MEMS that uh, Arjun just mentioned. And, uh, and, you know, and even their technologies, uh, it wouldn't work, okay? So the search goes out. Auto basically said, hey, look, there's got to be someone who's working on a chip, right, that won't melt, right? And the word comes out to us, right, and say, hey, look, Ignite, um, you guys are the projector people, you know, what do you think? And we say, well, you know what, we're looking at TI's technology, right, most wonderful technology in the world, best respected, but there is a key piece in there, that red piece, which is a uh, hinge, okay? And the hinge, and the, the whole thing hinges on this hinge, right? And, uh, and it's made of aluminum, okay, and it melts at 660 degrees. That's a lot of chemistry right there, but that's as much technical as it gets today, okay? And, uh, and because of that melting point, that's probably the reason why your chip is going to melt in the headlight. Well, we happen to be working on a technology, okay, um, that the hinge is actually made of silicon, and silicon can last up to 1,400 degrees. So, hey, if you use our chip, most likely it's going to withstand it, much better than TI's at least, right? So automaker basically says, hey, look, that's a really great idea. Let's do this. Okay, so five years ago, as a startup man, okay, I have a big auto tier one, you know, in my corner, and we go out to all the semiconductor fabs, okay? And, uh, you know, I'm in Israel, I'm in the United States, Taiwan, Japan, right, uh, China, right? And basically saying, hey, look, I want to make the, the chip that's going to be in the headlight that's going to be used by, by Toyota Prius and Tata Nano and then the big masses, right? And all the semiconductor fabs, definitely want this business, right? Because it's going to be good volume, it's high margins, right? But no one can do it, okay? Because all those uh, semiconductor fabs, they were chasing more than more, okay? They are doing smartphones, they are doing tablets, and they're awesome, okay? But they didn't have the niche technology that we did, okay? And it just so happens that Silterra, okay, had been focusing in on that niche material. Uh, Mohan, who's sitting right there, right? Uh, you know, lead engineer in MEMS for Silterra, we've known each other for the past 10 years, right? And, and he gives us a call and says, hey, look, we might have the tools and the technologies that could do this, right? So we come in and we start talking, right, four years ago. Uh, I got a big auto in the corner and say, hey, look, smiles are around. Let's get it done, 
Okay, and so you know we've been working hard for the past two years. The results are looking great, and uh, we'll probably be able to get this out in front of uh, uh, OEMs uh, sometime, you know, this year, real soon. Okay, so I think uh, you know it was a long time in the coming, uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, in about four or five years, right? Because auto always takes time to implement things. Uh, we'll be able to save, you know, like 290,000 lives a year in the United States. Okay, and, and make the world a better place. Okay, so that's the first thing I want to talk about. All right. Um. And so, you know, then you say, okay, that's great. Yeah, you got headlights, you know, and you have a cake and eat it too, and you have four or five years from now, okay, maybe we're going to be in Tata Nano, that's great. Um, but how about today? How can we save 290,000 lives this year, okay, which becomes the second topic of conversation, okay? Um, uh, our, our first speaker, uh, Mr. Youssef from Frost & Sullivan, was talking about, you know, parking lots, right? You know, the guys who do the parking lot might be the next big billion dollar unicorn. Well, guess what? I have here a proposal for parking lots. <laughs> I didn't pay that guys my first time meeting. <laughs> Pretty excited to talk about it. Okay, so one in five crashes happen in a parking lot, okay? You see, unlike the Autobahn in Germany, right, where people drive at 300 kilometers per hour, okay, pedestrians know there's lots of fast driving cars. They know better than to go stand on the Autobahn, okay? It's, it's, they don't do that. But if you're in a parking lot, the parking lot is the only place where you're supposed to have pedestrians and moving cars in the same space. Okay, and, you know, yeah, that's what's supposed to happen, okay? Um, it also happens that parking lots are, and for the majority of countries out there, okay, it's not controlled by the government. It's controlled by, you know, your, your Ikea or, or Eon or, you know, whatever the real estate owner of that parking lot is, okay? It's an unregulated area, but, you know, 14% of all insurance claims come from crashes that happen in the parking lot. Okay, 20% of vehicle pedestrian collisions that happen in parking lots, and 20% of that leads into an incapacitating injury. Okay, and to that, we think we have a solution if we made a video to try to, to, to deliver that point. Can I have you guys uh, execute the video? Thank you. So, you know, pretty straightforward, right? And I apologize, a lot of the signs are still in Japanese, but, you know, hey, uh, we're operating primarily in Japan. Um, you know, it's not that, that hard technically, right, to be able to, you know, create a system. I mean, we got, you know, cars that can drive from, like, Google, like, you know, one country, on one end of the U.S. to another. We got Tesla autonomously driving. I mean, the camera is well worked out in technology, right? It's not that hard to say that, hey, look, there's a child coming into my lane as a driver, okay? The problem is, is how do you communicate that to the driver, 
Okay, I mean, it, it doesn't work for that camera to send me like a, a banner on my smartphone, hey, you got someone coming into your lane, you know? That's not gonna be helpful, that's a distraction. Um, and so what we've done is, okay, look, why don't we just use a projector on the ceiling? I mean, we've been creating, you know, projectors for the headlight, right? Well, instead of using it for headlights, why don't we just take it on the ceiling and just, you know, project to the floor? And not just projecting, hey, warning, there's a person coming in your lane, but we can also use it to guide people, right, to get to, like, in a one point to an open slot. I mean, if you think about, like, I'm trying to go to Ikea in the weekend, you know, and it's like 3 p.m., the place is packed. Right? And you see those like, in the big lights, you know, that the green light says there's something nearby and the red light, right? And whenever there's a green light, everyone's like rushing for the same spot. A lot of them driving in the opposite direction. And then there's like a, a, a little girl running, bam, that's how it happens, right? Okay? So if you can imagine a world where you don't have to do that, okay, and people have a pretty clear idea, hey, we're gonna get you from the entrance to an open slot and it might take some time, but here's how it's gonna happen. People can just kind of, you know, cool down and, and chill out a little bit, and I think, you know, um, uh, the world will be a happier place, okay? <laughs> but, you know, it, it doesn't seem that hard, but why was it so hard? The, hard, it's the reason why is a technical hurdle, okay? And when you try to use a, a projector, okay, on a ceiling, okay, you have to cool it. Okay, with conventional things. I mean, I got these fans right here with these big lights, right? And you can hear the fans going, right? Same thing for this. And if you have a fan in a parking lot where you, you got so much dust and fumes, okay, these things can get clogged up really easily. What we needed to do was we needed to create a projector that can do it with, without using a fan, okay? And I talked earlier, hey, look, you know, we talked about a, a headlight where the chip doesn't melt, okay? we have really high heat resistance. What that means is we can get rid of the fan and we need to blow up our heat sink to be a lot bigger than, than our conventional projector, but we can probably get there. We have a fanless projector, okay? And if we can do that, it doesn't seem like a big deal, okay? Like here's this in the thing and it just projects, you know, stop, go this way, here's a green light, you know, right? But uh, it, it could really make a difference. And we have that coming out, okay? Um, Talking to uh, talking to you know to the real estate guys or you know the, the parking lot service you know companies the guys that are producing the equipment you know for the security cameras for the the, the, the parking lot guys um, a lot of folks are on board we'll sort it out uh, right now I'm looking to execute in Japan I'm getting requests from Hong Kong hopefully we could do things in Malaysia okay I think we can try to make this happen in a parking lot you know in 2019 that'd be a great day for me okay uh, once again. Um, so Terra, they had things like the high voltage transistors, they had MEMS processes, okay? Um, I did have, you know, a lot of invites to a lot of different countries, and once again, my investors being Japanese, okay, they would have preferred something in Japan. Could they do it? They could not, okay? They couldn't, but so Terra could. Why? Because they were focused on the same niche things that we did, and it just so happened that the wavelength really matched up, and uh, really smiles all around, okay? So you know, thanks to so Terra, we really uh, appreciate that. So just to kind of wrap it up, um, you know, we're doing well, okay? We have telecom and uh, we have auto. Okay, I just talked about the two ideas from auto. Uh, there's specific needs that people are looking for to make their world a safer place. Okay, I think they're pretty easy to understand. Uh, smart parking lots, and that's, you know, we try to get that done to save 209,000 lives this year. Uh, and hopefully uh, we can get to the Tata Nano in five years uh, and, uh, and make it happen for them as well. And uh, hopefully make the world a better place. Thank you.